Hey guys and gals, welcome back to Omega Zone Gaming. So, I'm going to get two videos out today, an Omega Zone quick review and uh, a news story. I'm going to try for a third, but I'm under the weather and I'm having to clean my house while under the weather. So we'll see how that uh, plays out. There's several reviews I want to get done, I really do. Dragon Quest I want to get done, Resistance of Fate, uh, 4K HD I want to get done, Call of Duty Black Ops 4. I have Black Ops 4 and I'm almost ready for the review of that. Uh, there is a lot of stuff I want to get reviewed for you guys. Uh, Fist of the North Star, it's a game I feel everybody should play. Uh, I, I want to get these out for you, I really do. Uh, I just have been having a horrible strain of luck recently with my health and things going on in my life. Uh, so, you know, it's not that I don't want to get the stuff out. I do, and I will get the stuff out. But for today's Omega Zone quick review, we will be talking about Final Fantasy XV Pocket Edition. Now, why am I quick reviewing this? Well, quite honestly, I didn't have a lot of fun with the game. Uh, it would literally be a chore for me to get footage again. I, I like doing YouTube because it's fun for me. It's an escapism. Uh, I don't make any money currently. By the way, if we can push us up to a thousand subscribers, I can start uh, giving you guys uh, really good, really high quality content. I can't do that on no money. Uh, most of my money goes towards buying the games that I review and uh, paying my rent <laughs> and my phone. So, you know, if uh, any of my subscribers have friends that they can push up so I can get that to that thousand mark. I already got the 10,000 views, but you know, I need to hit that uh, subscriber mark. Uh, then the content will get better. Uh, but for now, let's actually begin with the review. So, what do you get a, out of buying Final Fantasy 15 Pocket Edition? Not a lot. Uh, the story is subpar. Uh, especially for the loss of expressionism. The core story is still there, don't get me wrong. If you want the Final Fantasy story and just this story, that is still there. Uh, I will definitely give the overall story of it a 4 out of 5 still. But when we get to graphics, I'll explain the whole expressionism thing and why I'm giving it a loss there. So you still get Noctis leaving for his wedding day, fighting a grand battle, Destiny, yada, 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 not going to throw a bunch of spoilers for the 5% of the population that hasn't played 15 yet. Uh, so the story is intact. Four out of five. Okay, so let's get on to the gameplay. This is the most jarring part. What they tried to do was take... A mixture of the 15 combat and mix it in with a more gotcha RPG combat style, which does not work. It is horrible, guys. It is one of the worst RPG combat systems I have used to date. Uh, it doesn't feel inspired. Uh, controls can be iffy. Aiming is even worse than 15. 15 had some aiming issues, especially when multiple enemies appeared on screen. But this has aiming issues when there's just one enemy on the screen. One. So, you know, uh, it's definitely got its problems. Uh, unfortunately, those problems do show. Uh, also, a big part of the 15 experience for gameplay was traveling. That has been completely removed. Uh, you know, you very rarely drive the car. It's mostly to set up master cut pieces where they want you to see like Golden Key or Luminous or uh, Luminisa City or however it's pronounced. Uh, I can't remember off the top of my head, but uh, anyway, it's for those major set pieces that you get any actual time in the car hammerhead you know you get to not you get to do the little bit of pushing towards it but you don't actually see the actual pull in it actually goes to black completely and then cindy's walking up so unfortunately uh they also went for a diablo s camera 
that focuses on Noctis and the bros, which does not work. You can't see what's behind you. You can't see what's ahead of you. You can't see any environment. Unfortunately, the premise of a Diablo-esque camera would actually probably work, considering I've used the uh, 15 camera from a high point before. So technically, that camera should have worked, but something went wrong in translation to this style of uh, graphics. I can only give it a, realistically, a 2 out of 5 in the combat department. Okay, so on to graphics. The graphics are okay. Now, this is what I was talking about. They, It looks a little bit better than what you got in the DS there for the chibi look. They have mouths, you know, their eye colors are the same. What you lose, though, is expressionism. Uh, let's take one of my favorite scenes of Final Fantasy XV. When they're going to fight uh, Titan and Noctis is having his little meltdown and him and uh, Gladios are yelling at each other, you still hear that voice. You still hear Noctis's voice. But the, the eyes don't move, so there's no expression of anger. So without having that expression, the graphics feel hollow in that aspect. Uh, for what they did, I will give the graphics a 3 out of 5. They impressively used chibi art style to recreate the world and characters of Final Fantasy XV. I will say, uh, when I left Insomnia, it looked like Insomnia. I was actually impressed. Hammerhead looks like Hammerhead. Uh, I was generally impressed by it uh, for what it did. But that expression loss is what kind of hurts it for me. I... I want these characters to show their emotions, not just say their emotions. Which I think is a very important form of any visual media. Show, not tell. Uh, so, 3 out of 5 in that department. The one glorious, bright, shining spot is the audio. The weapons still sound as good as they did in Regular 15. Uh, the music is still there. You get uh, Noctis's interlude, which is the one of the best operatic pieces ever, in my opinion. Uh, they lost Florence in the Machine, Stand By Me, but with how many copyright strikes that song was getting. My own channel included got striked for that when I was doing my uh, live stream of uh, 15. So, I, I'm sorry, but... I'm, I'm not sad to see the song go. I'm sad in the aspect that I like the song. I think it's by far one of the best versions of Stand By Me. But Florence and Machine, A, don't really own that song. You were making a cover of it. Which has had a cover of it made before. Which started out as a cover made for a song that existed a while back. If anybody truly, truly owns that song. It's probably Disney. If anybody has the, you know, the uh, copyright materials and trademark materials for that song, it's probably Disney. So, you know, it's a shame that you had to act like that and now your song's not in the pocket edition because I do love the song. But overall, audio is a 5 out of 5. The audio is the one major godsend in this game. It is the thing that should be inspired to in this game. So we've heard the good, we've heard the bad. A lot of middle to low scores, and a lot of, you know, my av my above average to great scores. What do I give Final Fantasy XV Pocket Edition a total score of? A two and a half out of five. If you're looking for just a quick way to experience the FF15 story without any th throws of the game, then by all means, play it. For everybody else, don't spend 30 bucks on it. Wait for it to go down. It may even go free to play like, uh, uh, well, free to download, I should say, like uh, the King's Glaive uh, game did, uh, or the King's Knight game did. So, you know, uh, it's it's one of those things where I don't feel anybody should spend hard-earned cash for the game. It still gets the story right and the music right, but everything else just doesn't feel like FF15. So, I will be back later with a news story. 
Until then, like if you like, sub if you want. Uh, feel free to leave any comments. And as always, I am out.